Hi guys, and welcome to another edition of Advanced Woodscraft. In this lesson, we're going to go a little more in depth about reading your environment, being woods wise, as I've heard it called. Savvy was an old mountain man term, and early term in the old west, where they had a lot of savvy, meant a lot of knowledge about the environment and how things worked, and etc. So today we're going to talk about something that affects all of us, storms. And I want to detail this out to you so that you can be aware of it in your environment and how to not fear it, but understand it and therefore have a deeper knowledge of what you're in involved in when this is going over you, okay? Now, many of those that are followers of mine that are not in the United States, our storms are particularly intense our storms can be more violent in many ways. We are more prone to tornadoes and more prone to hail and other environments. So what I'm about to say may not apply so much in your environment except in extreme cases, but it may apply. The dynamics are the same. What we need to understand is what is going on and why, okay? Now, let's start with the storm itself. Cooler air, usually coming down from higher elevations, higher latitudes, flows down into warmer regions. Warmer usually means more moisture. Now here in my south, that is a onshore flow of warm, moist air from the Gulf. This also applies to the Pacific Northwest and etc. In a nutshell, you have a pocket of warm, moist air you have cooler, drier air that comes in. Cool is heavy, so cool sinks. So cool air comes in at the bottom. Warm air comes in at the top because heat rises, okay? Now how to remember this is really simple. When you open the refrigerator, cold air hits your toes, don't it? That cold air falls out of the refrigerator. Warm air, like steam from a pot on the stove boiling, rises, okay? So you have a pocket of warm, moist air, and cold air comes in. If it comes in slowly, then this cold air literally kind of pushes, this kind of stacks up the warm, moist air, and this forms the clouds and the rain, and this is just gentle rain, okay? This will be obvious to you whenever you're looking at the cloud cover and the clouds are fairly high but they become fairly thick and you start getting rain and there's a cold front coming there's a dominant wind coming from the north northeast or northwest excuse me north northwest or west usually is an indicator of this cool dry air coming in and going to be stacking up and forcing as that warm air condenses it rains. This is just gentle rain. It may be a little heavier, but it's normally nothing intense. So, how you can tell it while in the woods. High, lofty clouds that are fairly thick, that can become fairly dark, no thunder, and there's just a constant breeze. No heavy wind, no argument in the wind, just a solid, like a wave, coming, like a river flowing. That's exactly what it is, a river of cool, dry air coming in. And so this is something that does not need to concern us a great deal. We could get wet, but it's not normally going to be sudden downpours, and etc. <clears throat> now, let's progress up one, where you've got warm, moist air, and it forces over cold air. Well, that's when you have sudden cloud bursts. That's when you have things that are sometimes, in the extreme case, and we'll deal with them in just a minute, called microbursts. And this is when warm, moist, heavily laden air runs into cold air. And cold air, remember, starts down here at the ground and comes up like a wedge. And it comes in here, warm, moist air is like this, it's high, and it hits it. Where it hits, right up here, there becomes a magic point that the warm air cools and thus cannot hold that moisture and it just pours like a waterfall. That is a cloud burst. Okay? So, how does that apply to us? 
if it's been cool and there's warm coming and they talk about the temperature is going to suddenly jump up today from 65 and it's going to be 85 you can expect that warm moisture to come in and there's a good chance of rain because of that so if you personally notice the temperature is going up a lot faster than it normally does and I see thick heavy clouds coming in I will probably have mild thunder what I mean is mild thunder is you'll hear that occasional thunder but it's not a constant boom 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 it's just mild it's a, a boom maybe 20 minutes later a boom it seems to be way over yonder that's heat lightning a lot of times that's where there's a reaction going on causing the charged up particles to strike upward rather than down so much or cloud to cloud and therefore you'll hear the sonic boom of the lightning but again it's not that prevalent but what this we need to focus on for this is cool temps overrun by warm will have heavy downpours for short duration so if I'm moving from A to B and I see that cloud coming and I can hear it and I can tell it's about to rain I can just get up against a tree, hunker down if there's no lightning, put my rain cloak on and expect it to be 30 minutes tops until that wave passes me because that wave is pushing up and as it does this wave of rain moves up as this cool air is incorporated. Cool air must sink, hot air must rise. So this hot air will warm and get rid of that cool air, see? So it's kind of like this coming in. This is usually non-violent weather, usually, okay? Now let's take a step up to an actual thunderstorm where it's not just a mild boom boom but you hear boom several times a minute. And this can grow up into what is called a supercell, okay? Typically what these are driven by is where warm moist air and strong cool dry air, a low, forces in and they actually go underneath and lift up but they trap pockets of hot air. They roll over because they're moving at such a speed and this warm air is trapped. Well, it's got to go up. But this cold air has got to sink so it's pressing down and it's lifting up at the same time and these two air masses have got to give and then as they a hole appears and when it does that warm air spirals up and that cold air spirals down so as the tornado spins up this is really like a F1, F2 an extreme case F3 but usually never an F3 it's super super rare and that's where pockets of trapped air have got to spin up now there's another place that, that is the cradle of tornadoes. We'll get to that in a minute. But this is that one that just appears out of nowhere. And it only lasts. It's a small, it's a weak tornado. It only lasts for a few minutes. It runs a mile or so and that's it and it disappears. These are ones that it's a pocket of air being trapped. So that cold air rolled over so suddenly. That front so suddenly it went over and it trapped this pocket. And it's pressing down increasing the pressure and at point X. It gets a spiral and it goes up. And that's a dust devil on the bottom end that we've seen as kids out in a dusty parking lot or a field. It's sitting there spinning. That's a F0 dust devil. Same concept. The pressure's got to go up and the air's got to come down and they're just exchanging. And that forms. That's also the reason it's such a short duration. So for us in the field, understanding that when something like that spins up where one spins up there'll be very chaotic wind precedes it as those two forces that pressure coming down and that pressure going up start arguing and so all around you all the trees start going haywire and the wind keeps coming from different directions it's been this way all day and suddenly it's coming from everywhere that's a big hey guys look up look for one of those low quick spawning tornadoes because we're in the field we're surrounded by trees we don't have access to a weather report at the moment and suddenly wind starts going the trees all going crazy look right then 
listen for the sound of trees snapping off because it'll be intense but it's going to last just a short amount of time just a few minutes really as that pressure spins that vortex it's going to go a short distance and then evaporate just like a dust devil but it's more intense okay now we come to the main star of the show and that is the supercell a supercell is simply a powerful cold front or low pressure trying to push into a strong warm moist air and it stocks it up and the two begin to fight and their child their birth of that is a thunderstorm and the thunderstorms can stack up and join forces and become a super cell now let me draw you a little picture up here because I want you to understand how to see it and how to know when to take cover from the rain and when you, it's not going to bother you. I'll be right back. Okay, now let's understand. The clouds, due to this weather change, due to these air temperature changes, pockets of really warm air that have now become surrounded, like an island, like cool air has gone around it, of warm air must rise. It's sucking that moisture and it goes up. It goes higher and higher and higher. It gets up there to point X and it starts interacting with the high atmosphere, which is very, very cold. Remember, when cold and warm, moist air collide, it loses the water. So that water starts to condense and stops being unseeable little particles and starts becoming like fog, and then the, which is a cloud and then becomes denser and denser until it's like a heavy, heavy mist, like you're in a shower or something. But the updraft of air is keeping it up, and yet the weight wants to push it down, so it kind of becomes like you've seen a ping pong ball floating on a column of air. This huge millions of gallons of water are just floating up in there, and it's thick, and they bump into each other and they start forming puddles, but they're right there. If it's a big supercell, it's got hot enough, it's got high enough, it's got cold enough that those form sleet and then those sleets start bumping in together and form hailstones and the weight gets heavier and heavier and the wind's trying to keep it up and the weight can't do it and at point X it happens, it breaks and it starts falling. So let's look at the storm, how it relates to you. Here you are. From you, you can see this storm. That big cloud right there with all that thunder and lightning. And the wind is coming toward that storm. It's actually sucking the air toward it. Okay? So if I'm facing the storm and the wind's coming from my back going toward it, okay? As that air comes across, it encounters this dynamic. And here's what happens. This is the inside of the cloud right here, right in here. It has started, the water is condensing, it's falling down, and here's where all the rain is hitting from here to here. That's the rain hitting the ground. But as it does that, whoosh, it's sucking air with it too, right? And that air hits the ground and spreads out in a 360, whoop, and flows outward. As that air comes down from up high, and this is very cold air. How many times you've been at the edge of a major thunderstorm, you feel a big temperature change? That's because way up there, 40,000 feet, 50,000 feet, whatever, the temperature is much, much colder than it is here. That's why it's forming hail and ice. And that temperature sucking is pulling the cold of space down to the surface. As that water and air come down hits and hits and flares out it comes out from under the edge and then it encounters that wind that's coming this way it's being sucked toward it and what does that cause an updraft that air hits the outside of the cloud runs up to the top and then runs in and runs down hits the ground boom and goes again just like that 360 degree rolling oscillation of air. This rolling, some of that air as it turns, doesn't go. It gets sucked back in. 
and it starts this rolling vortex right here on the lower edge of that, on the front edge of the one we're concerned with. The one where it ain't raining over here and you know where the storm's going, okay? As it's doing that, that air is sitting there in a circle. As the air is falling behind it, hitting the ground, rolling, going back up, it's a vortices doing like this. Charging up, getting strong. That air sucks back up to the top, rolls over, and sucks back in. As this progresses, this right here, that vortices that's sitting there on the edge, rolling. You ever seen a a dam on a river and seen a log or something come over the dam and get trapped up against the dam just rolling where the water's falling hitting and going but it's constantly rolling toward the dam that's exactly what's happening with that wind and that wind gets detached and that rolling hooks free and comes down and that is a tornado that is a big bad tornado because unlike that thing we talked about a minute ago of trapped air spinning up, those are weak. They can do damage, but usually they spin up, they're really intense, and they're very, very short-lived, only a minute or so, as that trapped pocket of air gets free and it moves on, see. This is powered by that. And so that's when you get long run, big tornadoes. We're talking tornadoes that are a half mile wide to out in Kansas a mile wide because it doesn't have any ground effect to break it up. And so this huge vacuum suction, this vortices, is coming off of the edge of this big air fight. Even if it's just a thunderstorm that you can barely understand is there because it just because upper level winds are fighting. It does the same job. But that vortices forms that big powerful tornado, an EF3, an EF4, even an EF5. And that runs along like a vacuum cleaner hose being drug along the ground. That's where you have tornadoes that run across three states that are on the ground for 100 plus miles and are on the ground 45 minutes, hour, two hours because that's tied to that storm, okay? So, how does this apply to you and me in the field? What to look for? If you're standing there and you're looking at this big thunder sail and you're hearing the booming and the bamming and the wind is coming from your back, it's not going to rain on you yet. You're not underneath this event horizon. Okay? As the storm moves over you, that wind that's coming from your back, you're suddenly going to get into this. And you'll know. Where all the wind's going that way and suddenly the trees go every direction and it's just chaotic wind that's this you are within a few minutes at the most 10 minutes of getting wet because of that rain pouring down see this wind column that border with it and the border of the rain is less than 10 minutes away take cover now so if I've got a storm right there and it's booming it's bamming but the wind's blowing from my back toward it. I ain't worried about it yet. I can keep moving, I can keep traveling, I can look for me a place to get. Is the storm coming directly at me or is it kind of on a path that's just gonna cross ahead of me way up kind of? Okay, if it's coming right at me and that wind is to my back, I will very quickly get to this point. What is my uh-oh moment that I need right now? Forget it, put the tent tarp up, hunker down now. Quit trying to get to the place. Pick a spot now. That moment. When the winds go chaotic around you, you're within 10 minutes of the rain. Hunker down now. Get under position now. This is not a tornado. This is that transition. Once you get under this edge, it's going to pour because this is all this water falling out of this cloud, right? That's where you're going to have your biggest drafts and stuff like that. Now, hail. Where does hail come into this? This storm has got so high up that it can't hold it. And that updraft is so strong that that water up there at the top that's coming out of the cloud is frozen now. It turned to slush. 
hail is gathering, and the hail pieces are hitting together, and those strong winds are keeping it up, and then the bow breaks, and it goes to falling. And so quite often, hail precedes a tornado on one of these big sails. Okay, now here's how. Those winds are coming so strong that when they get out here and they do this, they throw the hail. So the hail normally starts hitting in this, not as much under here, because it's actually sucked out and it drops. So if you're in the forest, if you're out to go camping, if you're already set up in camping, and you suddenly get chaotic winds and then hail of any sign to appear, red flag guys, wake up, tornado. It may not be on you. It may not ever form out the top of that cloud. But you are sitting on it right then. Now, if this tornado comes out and it kind of drags behind the cloud into the rain, that's commonly called a shrouded tornado. It means you can't see the tornado because it's in the middle of all that rain. But it's still attached to that air. It just, instead of running out forward, it goes back. And it's being drugged like this. Well, the rain's right here, but it's being drugged like this. So here it is tearing up everything, so you can't see it. So therefore, here are the factors that you're looking for when you are trying to be weather alert as a woodsman. This is the advanced part. Okay? One, if I detect a sudden change in temperature, either going up or going down, I notice my clouds. If they're high, fluffy clouds, probably not going to rain. I don't worry about it. If they're thick, heavy clouds, but they're not too high up, they don't, you know what I mean? They're not way up yonder and thin, but they're thick clouds, blocking out sun. And it's a big enough change, I may have rain on the way. So I need to be prepared for rain. Have where I can pull my punch you out, put it on quickly. Do I hear thunder? Thunder indicates sporadic thunder, weak thunder, a mild rain because it's just lightning to lightning cloud. Maybe it hits ground once in a while, but nothing big. Do I hear boom, 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 boom? That's a supercell. I will see it and hear it. What's my indicator? Is the wind coming from me going to it? Yes. Okay, then I need to be aware of it. It's in my zip code. I need to keep an eye on it. Okay? The wind suddenly go chaotic around me. Red flag. Start thinking about a tornado. Sorry, for some reason my camera is doing Let me shift over here a little bit. I think the whiteboard is washing me out. How's that? Okay. If even in the mild rain, if I suddenly get chaotic winds, that's a big red flag, look right now for a tornado to form on top of me. If a tornado does form on top of me and I can see it and hear it, it's over there and it's snapping trees, get whatever low ground cover I can here. But watch the trees because trees can come down. That wind is blowing outward in a 360, and so even though the, tr the storm is going that way, it can blow a tree toward you because that tree was already leaning like that and weak, and the storm just pushed it on over. So you need to have eyes on the sky right there. Get down to a low thing, get behind a big something that I can knock the wind off of me and look. You know, common sense. Is it on one of those early ones where it's weak, it's going to be just a temperature change, tornado, it's going to happen something on the last couple minutes it's not very dangerous it is dangerous but you know what i mean relatively all right then i'm going to take position get to where i can watch for it and when it's gone past me and it's gone i know i'm good because it's done gone is it from a thunderstorm which that front line or whatever up there spiraling spawned it which means it's going to be dragging it it could be a long run it could be a very powerful so i need to be aware of that but just because I got a report that it from somebody called me and said 10 miles that way they just had one. It could still be on the ground. Don't assume it's not your problem. Stay focused. If I'm in the field, if I'm in my tent or whatever, and this 
storm rolls over me and the winds go chaotic, your big red flag, then I got hail, a double red flag, I should be expecting a tornado to come over me. So to recap, number one, understand that this is simply a mechanical function of our environment. Nature is not out to get you. At the same time, nature does not care if you get ground up in the hamburger by this. So you must take care of yourself. One, do I have a big temperature change where heavy moist air is trapped or is coming in? That can spawn rain, but not severe rain. And that can spawn a very weak tornado if it's warm over cold. Okay? Uh, excuse me, cold over warm. Now, a big storm. Do I have a lot of thunder? A lot of lightning? Okay? Start looking for that chaotic wind. If it's wind, 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 wind from one direction, it's just a storm going over. If I get chaotic winds coming from every direction, red flags, start looking now. Be aware. The chaotic winds quit and no tornado has showed up. So the wind was coming from that way, going that way. The storm has now got here. I got chaotic winds. It's raining like all get out. The rain slacks up and then the wind is going that way. The storm is over. It's already passed by you and now the air is being sucked from the backside. Until I get that change in weather, I know the storm's still over me. So I'm not going to come out. Even though it may quit raining here for a minute, maybe a front line diagonally going across me where it's waves of storms, like a tra like car traffic flowing over. Just because there ain't an 18-wheeler right here at the moment on the interstate, there may be one in a minute. So I must therefore be aware of it until that wind change. And that tells me it's gone. Okay? I know this is kind of... Most people would say it was outside of the box of woodcraft, and I disagree. Woodcraft, being a woodsman, is about understanding your environment, adapting to your environment, being able to live off of the environment, and not going around with blinders on, completely oblivious to some of the major factors out there. You should understand what, do, what is a big red flag for a tornado those chaotic winds, hail, a big supercell or a front line producing that kind of stuff. That should click, time to start thinking and looking about a tornado, okay? Forest fire, are you in an area that is a big danger for forest fires? You must be aware and educate yourself on what are the factors and what to do in case a forest fire is coming. How can I protect myself? How can I get out of it? Or how can I do a back burn to make a safe area for me to get out of this? Those are things you need to cover. Now, Western people, you probably need to know that. Especially out even in Kansas. If you get a prairie fire, you've got to know how to do a backfire to save your life. If I'm going to be in the environment, I need to understand. You guys that are up in the snow country, the blizzard, watch the indicator of a blizzard. Not just a little snow, but a blizzard. A blizzard is a supercell, but it's generating snow instead of rain. And so therefore, what's it doing? How's it doing? What should be the factors? Educate yourself so that you know how to take precautions. Is it something that I can hunker down here in the field or I just need to run, you know? And speaking as someone who has rode out multiple tornadoes in the forest, I'm serious. It is no fun. I was at Fort Bledsoe in Tennessee for the southeastern rendezvous whenever we had seven tornadoes spawn on top of that campsite that night. And one of them was an EF3. And it was an interesting night. I'll put it that way, to be in a wall tent. But you have to be aware and understand. Again, Mother Nature is not out to get you. Same time, she doesn't mind you being roadkill. So you've got to be the one to pay attention and see what she's doing and know how to avoid it. Hope you've enjoyed this video guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button and comment for me if you would. 
Tell me what you think about it. How could I improve? You know, is there something else I should cover in this? I always like to hear from you. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.